Hi, this is Pastor Paul L. Anderson uh, from the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. We thank God that we're here on this fantastic Friday. It is the last working day in the business week for most people, and we're so grateful how God has blessed us to be together again. Today, I want to ask that you please look with me into the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses one through six from the New Living Translation, uh, a message that is entitled Unity in the Body, Unity in the Body. Now, Paul writes to the church of Ephesus. He begins to give them great and powerful words as he begins to uncover the riches that God has in store for all of us, and especially for them in their particular time. It is so great that this book of Ephesians became one of what they would call an encyclical letter. It was a letter that was so profound. It was so great that it was not only shared with the church of Ephesus, but it was shared with the believers in Galatia and Cappadocia and all of Asia Minor. And we even find it as you and I can read it today within our Bibles. Paul writes to them and he first of all tells them that I'm a prisoner for serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, when he writes this and says that he's a prisoner, he says he has voluntarily made himself a bond slave. That's one who decides that I am going to stick with this person. I am going to stick with this one being my master, regardless of what freedoms that I have. I am now bound. I am bound to this person and nothing can change that, nor will I ever remove myself. He says he's a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. He takes this from the context of, of one who's a prisoner is chained to someone. So he finds himself now chained to the gospel that he has now voluntarily said, I am going to always have the gospel connected to me so I can connect with other people. He's a prisoner. He is serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And then secondly, he says, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling that you have been called by God. Paul writes and he encourages the church of Ephesus, don't just say that you're saved, but live it and do it and let everybody know that you genuinely are called by God. And he tells us after you realize that he is a prisoner, after you realize that we're to walk worthy. And then he tells them, thirdly, always be humble and gentle. You know, he gives us something. Paul, remember, prior to this, he was Saul of Tarsus. He was not humble. He was not gentle. And God has allowed him to understand the great benefits and the merits of putting our faith and our trust in almighty God. He tells us to be humble and to be gentle because God always will bless those who are humble because it is so amazing that a humble person and a gentle person is one who can really experience and know the grace and mercy of God. He tells us within that same voice and within that same breath, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. He tells us none of us are perfect. So we have to make allowances for when we make mistakes, when we err, when we sin. And we do this because we love God and we love each other. He reminds them, thirdly, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace. Now, remember, he says he was chained. He was connected to Jesus Christ. And now he's saying, I want you to be connected with each other. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit and binding yourselves together with each other in peace. You know, wouldn't it be great if we could have peace with one another, peace with ourselves, peace with God, the peace that allows us to know that our faith and our trust is in almighty God and God is keeping us woven together. He's keeping us knitted together because the body was created to be one. You know, within our body, we have many different organs and many different parts. All the parts are vital. Some appear to be more vital than others, especially the heart. If the heart stops beating, I guess it's all over for all of us. But he lets us know that all of our body parts, all of our organs, everything's work together in unity for the purpose of giving the body everything that he needs. He lets us see fourthly, for there is one body and one spirit, just as we've been called into one glorious hope for the future. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who's over all and in all and living through you all. He lets us see that God created us to be one. There's only one Lord. There's only one faith and there's only one baptism. 
he had to remind them of this because there were those who were being baptized by so many different persons. When someone else comes in town, he lets us know there's only one valid baptism. That is the baptism of one who is a believer. When we say that we are believers in Christ, we have to make sure that we know without a shadow of doubt that we have received the power of God's spirit and that we are his children. He wants us to be united because there's one God and father of all who's over all and in you all and living through you all. Today, my brothers and sisters, we have all been created to be one. We're one body because we serve one God who does all things well. And today I want you to know that you are exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And this year of 2022, God has a very special blessing in store for you. And I'll see you on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.